Cheers. They're prehistoric. I mean, that's a dinosaur right there. So check out this view. What do you think? 15 degrees starboard, Captain. All right, dinner's ready. Yeah, those that's are the, the fun, fun size. size. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's a shark. Dude. You got to be careful about ship shit. I don't give a shit. Ship. <laughs> it is hard to believe that our season two road trip is coming to an end. I know it's sad. It's been a great season. I, I still remember back to Amicalola Falls, our first show. That's a park that's near and dear to our heart. It was our first state park in Georgia that we went in an RV long time ago. Long time ago. We've been going there for years, almost every year. And I remember so many bridges. I can remember in Maine, we went across the Penobscot Narrows twice. Bridge. <laughs> yeah, we did do it twice, so you can see it. Yeah. The Chief Standing Bear Bridge in Niobrara. Yeah. That was beautiful. South over Dakota. The, yep, over the Missouri. Yep. The only bridge that I don't ever have to go over is the George Washington Bridge. Thank you very much. <laughs> what was the interesting part about shooting these episodes was sometimes you had something planned, but it didn't go as planned. Like we were up in Searsport, Maine. We went to the Penobscot Marine Museum. We walked into the fishing exhibit, and I'm not sure what happened after that. I, I don't know what happened. I think the wheels fell off and we went a little overboard. Get it? See what I did there? After Sarah took us through the sea captain's house, we made it through some of the other exhibits, seeing the canoes and the dories and the sailboats. We headed into the gone fishing exhibit, and I think we went a little overboard. Well, this place is cool. Let's get dressed up and go lobstering. I'm in. I'm feeling like a true Mainer here, but it's gonna take us a long time to get out to the lobster grounds going this way. I feel like we're having fish sticks for dinner. Come on, sing a sea shanty for me, come oh, on. Oh, I know only one. Okay. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Boy, that's sad. <laughs> that's, that's all we could come up with. <laughs> I'm getting a little queasy. Uh-oh. 15 degrees starboard, Captain. Wait, I got, what's up with the bite? Mayday, Mayday! We need help. This doesn't handle like our Winnebago. I think you're gonna get seasick, sir. I'm gonna hurl. With all that cheesiness in there, though, I got hungry. It's time for lunch. <laughs> I don't know what happened that day. <laughs> we might have just been hungry. I don't know. I don't know. You know, sometimes when we're shooting, it's really the environment that kind of gets away from us. In Iowa, at the Grand National Rally in Winnebago, we were going to the rally that night. There was a roaming polka band. There was, it was madness there. It was loud, and audio certainly was a challenge. Good thing, though, you learned how to polka in Helen, because we did have to bust that out. Yes, we did. Check this out. So ever since we registered for the GNR, we've heard about this row party night. Yeah, I've heard that every state is represented and they share some local food. I can't wait to go see what we're doing. Think we can get some dinner? I think so. I hear a polka band, too. I got some kicks on Route 66. Oh, wow. OK. What's his name? Well, it's Minnie, Winnie. Oh, oh yeah. Cheers. Want some cherry mash? It's been made in Missouri, these guys are telling us, since 1918. Where is this from? Oh, H. Oh, 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 no. Finally found dinner. Oh, thanks to the Millwick group. Yeah. The military, Winnebago, international travelers, thank you so much. Cheers.
Lobster puffs are almost done. They're in the pizza oven. Lobster puffs? That reminds me of Belfast, Maine. We get to meet the folks at Young's Lobster Pound. One of the reasons why I love RVing are the people we get to meet. That's coming up. Look forward to it. The hardest part of putting this show together is the music selection. Sometimes it takes us half a day just to pick one song. You know, these lobster puffs remind me of meeting Raymond and Amanda from Young's Lobster Pound, a family-owned company, like Mike Hesse from Blue Ox, fourth generation family-owned. We got to meet Ben Hirsch from Campers Inn at the Tampa RV Super Show, and he's all about a family-owned business. Campers Inn was formed in 1966 by my grandparents, Art and Fran Hirsch. They went to an RV dealership because my grandmother was sick and tired of sleeping in tents with the Boy Scouts. They kind of get the bum's rush. My grandfather was a machinist by trade, so he had on his like machinist outfit and they basically didn't give him the time of day, probably assumed that he couldn't afford it. We've never forgot that origin story. It's really important to us to remember where we came from, why did we start? It was just one bad customer experience and that's why we're here to take care of our customers. Thank you, I'll be right back though. We're a family owned and operated company. We wanna just continue to grow and be the trusted resource for those in the RV industry, whether it's an employee looking for a career, whether it's a customer looking for an RV or our manufacturer partners. So we're their first choice in each of our markets. This is what you need, right? Oh, perfect. So we're serving a lot more customers than we ever did before, because when I grew up in the business, it was some families, but a lot of retirees. And now our average age of our customer is changing. The demographics of our customer base are totally different. It's a way bigger brush of the American public are coming into the RV industry. And I think it's great, because it's a great industry for people to explore and enjoy. They had everything we needed. It's really cool kind of growing up in this industry and, and being able to take care of generations of RVers and have generations of employees that are working with us. And it's kind of cool to see that all these years. Ready to hit the road. I love knowing where our products come from and our food comes from. I love the small businesses we've met. We're a small business. Yes, we are. We do all the editing on the show. And one of the biggest challenges we have as we come home with all this footage, we have to edit it into five minute segment and some of it doesn't make it. Like this next segment. It's like Wild Bills grew out of the swamp right there on the river. We walk up, you have to walk past this thousand pound gator named Bubba. So this is Bubba, he's a thousand pounds. And they opened the gate for me so I could say hi to him. Because I'm a fan of these guys. They're prehistoric. I mean, that's a dinosaur right there. 75, what do you say, 65, 75 years old? Kevin, it's time to shut the gate. Oh, God, that is a beautiful animal. Come on, Bubba. Make a noise. Come on. Kevin, oh my God. OK, that means close this gate now. Look at that animal. You're done. <laughs> this is insane. Thousand pound alligator right there. That is the nature coast, one of his residents for sure. Speaking of extra footage, we've got a lot more on our website. Yeah, we've got the trip maps that you designed. You made them for the crew so they knew where we were going. But anybody can see what we did for that episode. It's driving directions. You just click on it, and you can do exactly what we did on the episodes. And up next, we got sunsets. My favorite. I enjoy working with this crew so much. When we're on location, everybody kind of has their go-to and their strengths, and everybody knows what to do. Um, at this point, at the end of the season, um, we've certainly become a well-oiled machine. Oh, Patrice, check it out. It's a sunset. Oh, it's my favorite one from Nyabrera this season. 
We have seen so many great sunsets. We really have. I thank you for that. We drive all day, then we make camp, and we go get some steps in. We always go see a sunset. I remember Pensacola out on that pier and all the surfers, and that was one of the prettiest sunsets I remember. You were really in your element there, <laughs> for sure. You know, Searsport for me, we have never been to Maine. Walking on that beach, of course you take me to a beach, but it was beautiful. How about in Naples, Maine, we got to see the jockey cap, oh, that rock, gosh. we hiked to the top of we the rock. We had that whole place to ourselves, it was to beautiful. To watch the sunset over New Hampshire, it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. What about Melbourne when we went out and we were fishing? You know, sometimes we're not alone. There's some critters that come out there. We've got a little extra footage here on that one. This could be one of the coolest sunsets we've done yet. <laughs> Knee deep in the salt water, which you got me in here at night. <laughs> Now's when the critters come out. I just want to catch me a fish. This girl is out there knee deep, casting beautiful sunset, and I see a shark fin. I think I heard, da da. Hey, look, there's something coming in out there. Yeah, it something's is. It's coming straight out. Way. It's big. Holy see it? It's, it's a, a shark. It's a, it's a porpoise or a shark. <laughs> I'm not staying. I'm casting out there. <laughs> Ooh, it's right there. Oh, something. Look at it. Something bit my tail off. <laughs> Seriously. <gasps> oh, 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 oh. Dude, that's a shark. Dude. Here it comes, making its way in, and I see the dorsal fin and the tail, and it's not a porpoise. It's a bull shark. And it's the time of day where everybody's feeding because the sun's going down, so these toes got out of the water. Oh, he's going to come in here and bite my toes off. Yeah, look at that. That's a shark, dude. Um, I got one more cast in me because I saw that shark out there. I'm out soon. Gosh, I love sunsets. You've spoiled me with sunsets. I mean, one that comes to mind is in the Keys at Sunshine Key RV Resort. Yep. We walked right out, went to the sunset, walked through the marina and saw all those fish. We had a great spot. You can see the sunrise, pivot and see the sunset. And all that footage got left out of the episode. So let's watch it now. We get the jacks down, push out the slide outs, make it home, settle in. And then what do we do? Head to see the sunset. I love that about this park though, is that we got a text telling us the activities that are going on. Yeah. They have boats and paddle boards and kayaks available. I mean, that's pretty cool treatment. But tonight they told you about candy bar bingo. <laughs> but I think we're going for sunset. Mike, the general manager said that uh, they got 165 boat slips. He said in the summertime, it's packed. Yeah, they have 400 RV campsites. Check out the tarpon right here, right by the fish cleaning table. Oh. Look at them. They're perfect size. Yeah, those That's are the, the fun, fun size. size. Yeah. <laughs> There's a shark. Oh yeah, you can see that's a nurse shark right there in the bottom. See how she's just sitting there real, real docile? Yeah. So tomorrow when we go to the aquarium encounter in Marathon, you're gonna get an up close introduction to that animal right there. Oh my God, Patrice, look, that's what fed over there. Oh, it's a Goliath. It's a Goliath grouper. Look at all the fish, mangrove snapper, Sergeant Majors. Sergeant Majors are the little striped ones. You see these little striped yeah. ones? Yeah, I used to have them as a kid in my aquarium. Oh yeah. Yeah, pretty stuff. And you're in a perfect spot. You got Key West to the right, Marathon to the left. You put us right in the middle of it, baby. Oh, uh, this is beautiful. You know what I love is when people watch the show and then they ask us, how many camera guys do you have shooting the show? And we really only have three camera guys. And a photographer. And they're very hardworking. And up next, we get to meet them. And guess what? The bloopers. bloopers. Coming up next.
you know, we have had a lot of fun this season. Yes, we have. We have traveled, we have hiked, we have met people, we've eaten really good, learned lots of things. And we couldn't do it without our crew. They're so fun, it makes our job so much easier. If they're having fun, we're having fun. Absolutely. There's a lot of logistics, a lot of coordination, and a lot of work that goes into this. Our crew is that gotta get the next shot crew. So we sat them down and asked them some questions so you can meet the team of RV There Yet TV. I can't wait to hear what they say. Okay. Well, this might be painful to edit. Let's do this, come on, get to the RV now. And I'm always like, Brr. We rolled up in the Sears port. Abby! Good Lord, who wrote these questions? So what is it like to see the episode come together? First of all, Kevin does amazing editing with our video. When we finally get to see the episode, it's really cool because everybody's split up when we're shooting, and so we never know what anybody's shooting. Nicknames came about because I just wanted to describe the crew more. I wanted you to know more about them. George, truly organized, yeah. I don't think George has met a truly he didn't like. Sorry, I know it's not the most manly drink in the world, but I'm not a whiskey guy. I like my Trulies. Selfie camera stud Steve. Yeah, because we all see Steve. He's the most extraordinary guy in the world. Think about your average, like, 13-year-old teenage girl and multiply their amount of selfies by three and you would have Steve. Redneck fly guy, and it's the most obvious title you could have. Dan is not a redneck, but he speaks fluent redneck. He gets great stuff. It's also terrifying to watch. David is Inspector Shutterfly. This is true for David at work and at home. He always has whatever you need. Another great name for David would, would be MacGyver. Mic drop. I don't know, man. Oh yeah, make sure you tune in to season three. And now you see why we have such a good time on the road. Well, one of the perks of us editing the show is we get to see all our mistakes, but also the crew. I don't know if I'm making that many mistakes. <laughs> Up next, the bloopers. There goes George, making his cameo. Crap, I lost my shoe. <laughs> The sky had blued up a little bit. Blued up. Blued up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, aren't you cool there. <laughs> you gotta be careful about ship, ship. I don't give a ship. ship. <laughs> All right, ready, go, 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 go. It was great to browse around the shro <sighs> shro room. Shro room? <laughs> Welcome to me. <laughs> Jumped in the toad, headed. <laughs> you gotta make the sound effect? No, I just okay. was trying to get you. <laughs> <laughs> the history of Florida Bamp. <laughs> Florida Bamp. Florida Bamp. Bamp. <laughs> <laughs> they have, oh my God. Oh my, God. Dude, my brain is gone. <laughs> history. That was funny. Okay, I got it. You need in the kitchen. Take less detail. We just can't even say a sentence right now. I was on a roll right there. Three, four, one. We're going to put a little bit of it in the show. <laughs> We're gonna put a little bit of a, man, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change that up. <laughs> What's that? Maine and Maine and Maine. Okay, you're done. I'm done. As you can see, we have had a blast. We wanna thank everyone who has kept us rolling this entire season. I'm ready to hit the road again. Where are we going? Santa Fe, New Mexico. Mississippi to below to Chicago, Illinois to hear some blows. Ah, oh, but the jazz is in New